Welcome everyone to this CUBE conversation featuring Security AI. This is part of the AWS Startup Showcase Season 3, Episode 3. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Today, very excited to be joined by Rehan Jalil, the CEO of Security AI. Rehan, great to have you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Lisa, thank you so much for hosting. Uh, really interesting topic and great to be talking together. Gen AI, one of the hottest topics on the planet. How do you define Gen AI and its role in the current enterprise applications that we're seeing today? So, see, the AI has existed for quite some time and very useful, but you know, traditional AI has been used to find patterns in the data. For the very first time, I think people realize that uh, the Gen AI or the LLMs, they can understand the constructs of a natural language the hidden mathematics that exist, not in just in English, but any language, including computer languages. Now that is super powerful because machines were not able to do that before, only humans could do that. Now machines could do it, so it changes the game. So sitting on the shoulders of previous innovations, whether it's silicon, whether it's cloud, whether it is internet, whether it's mobile, this is probably one of the biggest revolutions because now computers can understand the language the, like we do. It's a massive, massive evolution. What Talk about the, the different ways that Gen AI is affecting different business functions like HR, marketing, sales, operations. See, all these functions inherently have different kind of knowledge represented in some kind of a language sitting inside the enterprise. If you contrast, draw the contrast with public systems like you know, ChatGPT and all, it's super cool, but it relies on public data. Without that data, there's not much value. But as soon as you want to take it inside to an organization, you have to use your own data and the knowledge and for different functions. So essentially, if you actually have the knowledge sitting inside the organizations and different systems for HR and finance and sales and marketing, if you can utilize and use these new Gen AI models, language models, you can unleash the power of the data that's sitting inside it. But for that, you need to do it very safely. You need to do it, understand what data is, who is entitled and so forth. So on one hand, no question this could, this is, can unleash the power of it, but the safety controls that you need to have that in place, they are uh, foundational. They are enablers for you to actually use this data, which is very different than using just the public data. Okay, so then why is data considered like the absolute cornerstone for maximizing the full value of Gen AI? Um, so in the Gen AI case, there's two fundamental things. One is the model, which is the super cool innovations that are going on. Uh, and they're going to continue to evolve. But the other is the training data. Now, without the data, you actually, there is no, uh, uh, no value that you can essentially create, just like a human mind. Human mind has all the neurons, but if you don't, don't learn anything, if you don't you know, have any content through which you can learn and you know, extend your imagination, um, it's not as useful. Similarly, I think very, very similarly, if you want to use the data uh, or use the Gen AI for the enterprise use case, you have to utilize the data and, and in the most safe manner possible. Safety is key there. So if, when we look at things like every organization we talk to, every event we go to, the rise of cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud environments, as people, we have this expectation that we can get real-time information, whether we're doing a transaction for a ride share or a transaction e-commerce. Talk about how data management challenges have evolved given the rise of cloud and those real-time data expectations. So, Think, think, I'll give, I'll give you a bit of a visual example. So think of this data sitting in some applications, some systems, some containers. Uh, this, we may call that those applications my file share system or may call S3 bucket or may call something. As, soon, as long as the data is sitting in those containers, um, you have understanding of who has entitlement to it, what is security around it, what compliance is. These are pristinely often done inside the organization. Now, if you want to utilize the power of this data, you have to take it out of those places, give it to these models to learn from it and ask questions from it uh, in different forms or use it for your own, building your own models. Um, to do that, to, as soon as you take the data out, you lose the entire context. Who is entitled to it? Why was it existed? It was, it, you know, what type of data was it? And uh, which means you want to make sure you evolve your data management practices that you preserve all the context around the data and you can put the appropriate controls and why that is. The reason is that if you feed this all this information to these language models without the right controls, 
anybody can ask questions from the prompts, which they may not have entitlements to. For instance, in an organization, should everyone be able to ask the salaries of everybody else? Or your financial information versus confidential or XYZ uh, you know, project that may be going on? No, that's why the entitlements exist inside the organizations. Which, which really means is that while you would bring the data to these models, you actually hold these controls are in place. It, it ups the bar on uh, data controls. And data controls is now evolving to make sure that it kind of, um, can support the safety around the usage of data in these models. So, Len, let's, you talked about context there. What are some of the risks associated with Gen AI when we've got sensitive data or, or untrusted data or PII that's ingested without that proper context? Yeah, so the, I will bucketize the, uh, the risk into four areas. The one is with the model itself. The model is something you're going to trust. You're going to ask for advice. Your, your teams are going to ask for advice. And if it's malicious, if it is being hacked, or if it is being tweaked, is going to give you an advice which is not uh, potent. And it may be actually be malicious advice. And so you know, make sure your models are assessed, models are protected properly, because if they are uh, malicious or they are actually compromised, everything they tell to the end user is not going to be, you know, uh, is going to be not be trust trustable. The second important thing is that what data goes into these models, this is the second category, because if we read the data, which is mixed up with all kinds of sensitive information or the things that the models should not know, uh, or the end users should not know, which are prompting uh, or using these models, uh, you want to make sure the data is actually controlled properly that's going into this model. That's second category. The third category is called prompts. The prompt is where people are asking questions and you're prompting the systems to give you answer. The, the, essentially, the takeover of prompts uh, can go, uh, can happen. The variety of threats that have come uh, come across where the prompts itself can be compromised or that can be used, that, because essentially that's a conduit to asking questions and but also asking questions in a way to extract data out or take over or influence your models itself. That's the third category. The fourth category is, is actually regulation. Ah. Now, across all these three things, from the model safety to the data usage and to the prompt safety, these regulations evolving across the globe, you got to know. So previous regulations existed like GDPR, and PDCCP and all, LGPD and all, they existed to make sure you use the data correctly. On top of it now, new layer of regulations are popping up, are going to pop up across the globe to make sure that across all these things of model safety, data usage, data controls, and as well as prompt, you actually have the right controls in place. And But the, the beauty is that if the, there is no question these are uh, CEO and board-driven mandates to utilize these, model, these models, the key thing is to enable the safety. So if you enable the safety in place, put the right guardrails in place, you enable this innovation, essentially, in the, in the enterprise. It's okay to, in the public domain, to just crawl and pick any data, but the enterprise, that's not okay. Yeah. You actually have to have these controls in place to actually know, enable this innovation in the enterprise. So for regulated industries, which is, uh, you, you mentioned some, some of the re regulatory bodies and that's obviously expanding globally. Why is explainability so crucial when organizations are using gen AI models? <laughs> yes, great question actually. So it's still a black, black box. When it produces an answer, this is a new kind of beast, <laughs> a very useful beast that it gives you an answer uh, based on the prior knowledge and prior data that you've had to it, but you often don't know why it's saying so and how it's saying. And uh, as humans, we are trying to be very predictable with technology. Let's say if it was a regular database, if you provide some, store some data into the data, you run a query, you get very predictable answer. But that's not true for uh, these kind of neural nets in which has a lot of compressed knowledge sitting in there. But when they produce some new new data, you don't know why they're, how is it actually generating it? And why is it important? Because you want to trust it. You want to make sure there's no bias in it. You want to make sure there's no maliciousness in it. You, you want to make sure it has not been compromised. There are very explicit attacks on these models through training data or something called AI poisoning. You can poison these models with data or something that's called LLM lobotomy. Just like you can take the somethings out of your brain, you can take the nets out of these called LLM lobotomy. That's happening. And more and more is going to happen. So 
So that's why you want to understand when the answers come out, can you trust it? And is it more predictability? Again, it's an area of research. Um, in, uh, but on the other hand, humans do the same. Humans give you an answer that you often don't know how much bias is in there and explainability is just not there. Uh, so it's, it's, there, there's, there's parallels here. There are definitely parallels. <laughs> so then walk me through security AI. How is it accelerating, enabling organizations to accelerate Gen AI safely? So what we've learned from some of our largest of our customers in the finance and airlines and insurance and other large uh, Fortune 500 companies, that they want to have this, what they call a data command center, a central place in which they have full understanding of the data, the full understanding of the context, who should have access to data, who should not have access to data, what are the security controls, what are the privacy controls, also the legal knowledge, the regulatory knowledge should be fused with it. That's what they're calling what as a data command center. Now, what, what does it provide for Gen AI? Because it can enable all the safety guard guardrails that you needed to understand what data could or should go to these models, who should be able to ask what questions on what data on these models, and whether there are any regulatory issues you should be able to see in this one common place, regardless of what, which part of the Gen AI chain you're actually trying to create. And that's what we're seeing is a, as a fundamental uh, ingredient to enable the innovation within the enterprise by enabling these safety controls uh, within the organization. You mentioned, you know, that Gen AI is is a CEO. It's a board level conversation across probably every industry. But I want to understand and get your perspectives on the rise of the data developer and the growth of open source communities. How does that impact the operational aspect of AI in businesses in any industry? I think we've seen that when you when when you enable the developers with all the right tools, and when you actually have an ecosystem in which things can come together into some environments in, in an open source form, it simply enables innovation. So it's no different in that sense uh, in, in the, I would say, Gen AI world. That's why you're seeing open source models uh, all the rage. You go to Hugging Face and all, you'll see so many open source models, and, and it's going to be pretty much the same. You're going to see the innovation happening through that ecosystem itself. But on the other side, on the at large enterprises, they certainly also want to make sure that through the open source, the things that are coming, they're safe. These models are safe. They're not being tweaked. How do you trust it? How do you verify that the model that has come from an open source is configured right or it actually is not something, is something that you would want to trust? Yeah. Uh, so the safety of the models and the things that are coming through uh, also is, is, again, top of mind for the enterprises. You talked about the data command center. Who's in command? in an organization or, or which roles are in command of the data command center so that they can really efficiently deploy, operate, and scale AI? Actually, it's a, it's a great question because think of data command center is a data command fabric. Fabric really means it has all the required requisite context and metadata. The people who actually want benefit from it, they could be your chief data officers. Of course, they are trying to enable is CIOs and CDOs. But in the same, through the lens of the same fabric, your security teams, CISOs, can understand how the data is being used. Your privacy teams can understand how the data is being used. Your compliance teams can see through this fact how the data is being used. And they can put their inputs and, of course, guardrails in place through that. So the whole concept of data command center is not necessarily one silo that has actually viewed the data. It actually is breaking the silo between different units that all need consistent view of the data, but in one place. They have their own views. They have their own con desired controls that they want to put in place, but they're not creating their own separate silo with this data command center. They all get access from a different lens to it. And that's key, having that, that single source of truth, right, is really in incredibly important to be able to trust that data. Do you want to understand, I'm sure you have many customer examples to share, but what, what's a customer story that you think really shines the spotlight on the value that security AI is delivering to organizations? Um, so I'll simply give an example of this breaking the silo desire. And this is uh, from one of the largest, let's say, global companies that provide you know, uh, services to employees. Um, and they, of course, provide uh, services uh, not in one region, but you know, globally. They wanted to make sure that it's when they actually put this data command center in place, it is not just one persona not just security persona, not just CBO persona, not just CPO. 
They wanted to do it all. I've uh, what we see, we're starting to see that different personas they come together in this example, uh, and they this chief data officer to the CISO, the CPO, the CISO, uh, as well as CSO that they actually as chief secu- overall security officer being in the room to make sure that this thing is actually implemented as one single source of truth uh, that different personas can actually utilize. And then, of course, this is a key enabler to use data for innovation like Gen AI. Which is key. Every organization, I was thinking of whether it's my grocery store or a gas station uh, or a, a a uh, food retailer, everybody has to be data co- data-driven companies these days. Doing that is is challenging, but the, the potential that Gen AI delivers safe, being used safely is going to be hugely transformative. Just want to uh, kind of wrap up here a little bit about the company. Tell me a little bit about you guys had a big uh, raise of funding in the near in the recent past. Tell me a little bit about that. Where are you using the investment dollars? Uh, uh, yeah, you see, we are Silicon Valley based company. Uh, roughly about 500 people. Uh, and the key mission is to enable innovation with data safely. And of course, innovation with Gen AI safely. Uh, and that's really the key mission to enable this, this concept of a data command center. Uh, we've raised roughly about 170 uh, plus million dollars. Um, and the, the examples that you gave from retailers to grocery shops to you know all categories, uh, you will find the customers uh, are for, for this company, including the largest airlines, the largest telcos, um, financial institutions, insurance companies. Why? Because they all have the desire to use data, but they want to make sure they do it responsibly. And, and we are, our mission is to enable that responsible use of data. Responsibility is absolutely key. Rehan, last question for you. What's next if we're going to be shining the light here on security AI? What are some of the things that we should be on the lookout for? <laughs> I think we, we, at this point, we want to make sure we go global. So a lot of our focus has been uh, North America and, uh, and with so, so many large customers utilizing it, we want to make sure the international, internationally we actually take in the company and grow global markets. Nice. Well, we, well, your mission and vision statements were crystal clear. We wish you the best of luck in that global expansion. Rahan Jalil, CEO of Security AI, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE as part of this CUBE conversation. We appreciate your insights and your time. Lisa, it's a pleasure talking to you. Very thoughtful discussion. Uh, We'll talk again. Thank you so much. We will talk again. We want to thank you for watching and remind you to keep it right here on theCUBE for more action. theCUBE, your leader in hybrid tech event coverage.